Hello booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookends and Books. And also welcome to another video where I test a setting and some new equipment. I bought a full length tripod that comes equipped with a ring light. And I've tested a little bit and I don't like the ring light. Um, there's a lot of glare in my glasses. You can see the actual ring light in my glasses. Um, because I don't wear makeup, I look like a ghost and uh, the books behind me are not very visible. So I think I'll continue with just without the ring light. You, you can see me just fine. My face is a bit darker, but I guess you, you can see me just, you can see me just fine. And you can hear me just fine, I hope. Um, so I'm going to continue without the ring light. And I hope you can hear me because I also bought a microphone, uh, but I'm not using it because I cannot plug it in my phone. I bought the wrong type of adapter adapted the, the wrong thingy so uh i i have to buy another thingy to plug the microphone in the phone uh so yeah uh so you'll just have to survive with the microphone of the phone i'm in a bigger room here so it might be a bit more echoey and i'll have to be careful not to move around too much because i'm standing up um i'm not very tall that's why the, the chimney the, the, the chimney mantle is just at shoulder length, at sh shoulder height, I should say. Um, but uh, yeah, th th that's what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't want to talk about technology in this video. I want to talk about the BookTube Prize and more specifically the nonfiction division. Uh, as of filming this video, the final 48 have been announced uh, a few hours ago. And I want to share some thoughts on that because I'm very excited about the BookTube Prize. I, I always am excited about the BookTube Prize because it's the activity that made me start a BookTube channel. It's when I learned of the BookTube Prize that I decided that I wanted to be part of this and I decided to start a channel. So uh, the way it works, in case you don't know, I will leave a bunch of links in the description box below uh, to the announcement video, of course, to the website uh, where you can find a checklist of all the books that made it, um, to uh, Robert's uh, channel. He is the organizer. Um, so his channel is Barter Hordes and it's on hold at the moment, but you can have a look. There's plenty of very interesting videos in there. So um, I'm going to leave links to all of that in the description box. And the way it works is that Robert asks for volunteer at the end of the year, and I volunteered for the nonfiction division. And on January 1, he sends us a list of 80 to 100 books, and we can vote for up to 20 of them. And then he compiles all these votes, and then the final 48 field is announced on February 1. And I want to talk about that field in nonfiction. Of the 20 books that I voted for, 16 made it to the final 48 and I'm very happy about that and I'm not very surprised because I knew that I was voting for books that were very popular and not because they were popular because I think they are good I think they deserve to be in the final 48 I think they will go a long way in the book two prize so uh, the four that I voted for that did not make it through were African Founders, which is a big history book about uh, African Americans at the origin of the United States, so at the beginning of the United States. Uh, I'm not surprised it did not make it through. I'm a little bit surprised because I thought th the, the theme was very... Um, it, it's something that can interest a lot of booktubers. Uh, American history, uh, African American history also, uh, but perhaps the, the, the length just discouraged a lot of people. Um, another one that did not make it through was The Method, about method acting. Uh, I'm not surprised this one did not make it through. There were quite a few books on cinema and I suppose the vote was, was split. Uh, people who were interested in cinema probably voted for one or two books, not for all the books that were in nomination. So it's probably split the vote and it did not make it through. Uh, the third book, oh, it was uh, France. A book on the history of France. I am absolutely not surprised it did not make it through. And the fourth was White Mosque. It's a memoir. I do vote for memoirs sometimes. Uh, it's a memoir about a woman in Uzbekistan and perhaps immigration. I don't remember exactly, but it sounded very interesting. Uh, this one, I'm perhaps a bit more surprised, but at the same time, there was just so many memoirs on the list and many memoirs made it through anyway. So I'm more or less surprised that it did not make it through. 
So now I'm going to go over each group one by one. I'm not going to mention every title and every author. If you want that, go check the announcement on the Booktube Price channel. Uh, I'm going to show you the pictures that Robert has prepared and you're going to see the covers anyway. And I'm just going to see a few words about the group, whether I find it interesting or not, what I voted for and what I think is interesting about that group. The first group, Group A. Uh, in these six books, I voted for two of them. I voted for uh, Life Between the Tides, which is a nature book, and The Song of the Cell, which is a science book. And um, the other books, I don't really know them. Uh, one of them is rather self-explanatory, Sandy Hook. It's clearly about um, not just the tragedy of Sandy Hook, but how uh, misinformation about the event was uh, disseminated to the point that uh, the parents had to go, uh, had to sue some people and it turned very ugly. It was already ugly at the beginning to lose your children that way, but then it continued just to be a pure nightmare. So I think that was also very interesting. Uh, the other three, they look like memoirs. Um, and I have to say that in the long list, whenever I saw memoir, chances are I thought, okay, never mind, I'll let someone else vote for it if they want to. So uh, I don't know much about these three books. Group B, that is a very interesting group because I've read two and three quarters of these books. Um, the two that I have read are We Don't Know Ourselves by Fintan O'Toole and The Facemaker by Lindsay Fitzharris. So The Facemaker is about a plastic surgeon that was a pioneer in the field. He worked during World War I uh, when the soldiers were, many soldiers were horribly disfigured and at the time plastic surgery did not very, did not exist in fact, it barely existed and he was uh, the, the, the doctor who is the object of the book, the subject of the book I should say, uh, was a pioneer in the field. And We Don't Know Ourselves by Fintan O'Toole, it's a history of Ireland. It is not a memoir, even though some people say it's a memoir, it is not a memoir. It is a history of Ireland, except that the frame of that history is the life of the author. He starts at the year he was born, and for example, as he go, uh, when he goes to school, it's the excuse, I guess, is the time frame, the frame he uses to talk about this, the situation of schooling, of education in Ireland. Um, same thing about, uh, anyway, um, it's not a memoir, it's a history, and it was my favorite book of last year. I love that book. However, I would not be surprised if it did not make it through to the next round, because this is a very strong group, a very serious group. Um, I'm glad my mom died. I did not read it, but I know it's very popular. It's a memoir. It's funny. It's, I don't know if it's light because obviously the topic is not very happy, but I think it is treated in a, in a rather light manner, not in, not too depressing, I should say. Uh, the book that I read uh, three quarters of is Index, A History of the and this one, the reason I did not finish it is that for some reason I did not read it in the three weeks that I had to read it and people were waiting for it at the library and I had to bring it back. Um, however, I can give you some, um, uh, some pro tip about that book. Read a paper copy. Uh, I tried to finish reading the book by listening to it on audiobook because there's an, there was at least last summer an audio version on script and there were some things that um, that were lost uh, because th there's a lot of visual references in Index, A History of the, and an important part of the book is the index itself. And the index is not in the audiobook because no, there's no, th th there's no narrator that's going to read you an index. It's just not going to happen. So I think you'd lose a lot if you just read uh, the audiobook rather than a paper version. And perhaps the electronic version works too, but I think the paper version for the index, it, it's worth it. And I, I, I've almost finished it, but I did not quite finish it. So I would have to reread it. Um, and also Sentient looks very good. Uh, and um, Magnificent Rebel also sounds super interesting. So this is going to be a very strong group. I don't know if I said it, but in uh, Group B, I voted for the three books that I had read because I think they are very good. Uh, I did not vote for the other three, but they were and almost voted for, the, for it. Um, yeah, well, except the memoir. Again, I figured other people will vote for it. Uh, but uh, Sentient and Magnificent Rebels, I came this close of, to voting for them. 
So group C, uh, I voted for um, How to Stand Up to a Dictator by Maria Ressa. Uh, she won the Nobel Prize of Peace, not literature, of peace. And uh, she lives in the Philippines and she talks about how to resist a dictator. And it sounded very interesting. So it's one of the memoirs that I voted for. Uh, the other books, I did not vote for them. Um, the ones that would interest me most would probably be uh, the ones about history, Secret City, uh, the hidden history of gay Washington. Um, I I thought about voting for that one, but I did not because I thought it was too um, too American. I guess um, it, it's not only about the United States; it's about Washington very precisely. So I thought it was a bit too precise for my liking. So uh, instead of voting for that, I voted for African Founders as my um, American history vote. I guess. And the other four, I don't know what they are. Uh, the fourth time we drown, this is obviously about uh, uh, migrants crossing the Mediterranean trying to reach Europe. Um, I think it's a memoir. Uh, free and body work, I think are memoirs too. And the other one, I have no idea. In group D, I voted for two books. I voted for River of the Gods and The Story of Russia, which is a super big book. And I hope the people who will have this group will not be disappointed with it. Um, I have not read it, uh, but Orlando, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Figus, 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 could be pronounced in so many ways. Um, he writes, he writes well. I've read uh, Natasha's Dance by him, and it was very interesting. Um, I know in Natasha's Dance, there were uh, some uh, complaints uh, of uh, plagiarism, or rather of sources that he did not reference expressly, specifically. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I don't think the problem appears in his further works. I think he learned his lesson, hopefully. Oh, and also I think he had posted positive reviews of his own books on Amazon and things like that. So anyway, um, <laughs> I think he learned from his mistakes and I think he writes very good books. So I voted for that because I think uh, Russia's history is very interesting. I also voted for River of the Gods by Candace Millard because that one I read and it was very good and I thought it deserved to be in the final 48. Uh, the others, uh, Half American, I almost voted for it, but once again, I voted for American Founders instead. Uh, so, and the others, I don't know what they are. Group E, it's another group where I voted for two of the books in the group. I voted for Eating to Extinction and for Thin Places and both are nature books. Uh, one is about food, plants, and the other one is about, uh, is about, I don't know what, a natural history of healing and home. I don't remember at all what it was about, but it sounded good, so I voted for that one. And I remember that I almost voted for Did You Hear Mammy Died? Uh, but it's a memoir, so I figured I'll let other people vote for that. And obviously other people did, but it sounded funny even though the the subject is a bit grim it's about his mother dying but uh i think it's again presented in in kind of a funny light uh i i think it's sort of making the most out of a bad situation or something like that um there's also a biography of uh of uh hoover and of uh john dunn and i don't really care for either of them so um yeah uh, I'm not telling you yet which group I have. Um, then comes group F. In this group, I voted for four of the books. Um, I voted for Breathless, An Immense World, Pandora's Jar, and Desperate Remedies. And Under the Skin made it this close to made for me to voting for it. Um, I did not vote for it because it was a book about um, the healthcare system in the United States. And I figured, again, it was a bit too specific for my liking. So I figured I'll let other people vote for it. Um, Desperate Remedies is about research on mental, mental illness. That sounded very good. An Immense World was praised uh, a lot. It won, I don't know if it won prizes, but it made the top 10 list of pretty much every nonfiction, nonfiction list uh, there was. Same thing for Breathless, which is another book about... Uh, health, I guess, because it's about COVID-19. And Pandora's Jar is about uh, ancient myths, about uh, women in ancient Greek myths uh, by Natalie Haynes. Uh, a lot of you probably have read Natalie Haynes. I have not, but I have the book. I actually have a copy of Pandora's Jar that I have not read yet. 
Um, and then the last book is con constructing the uh, constructing a nervous system, and it's a memoir. So I did not vote for that. <laughs> Are we surprised? Okay, Group G. How many books do you think I voted for in that group? There are five memoirs. Uh, so I voted for one book. I voted for the biography of Buster Keaton. Uh, then again, I don't know if it's for that one precisely that I voted because there were two biographies of Buster Keaton in the long list. And I know that I voted for one of them. So I don't know if it's this one or if it's the other one, but I'm going to consider that it's this one because I don't really care which one it is that I voted for. Um, the other five are uh, memoirs. But then again, uh, I came very close to voting for some of them. Uh, Solito, I've heard so much about this one. I, I almost voted for it. It made my list like, it made my top 25. Uh, and then I had to remove five and it was one of the five that I removed. Um, and uh, yeah, I almost voted for that. So it, it would not be such a, an awful group if I got it. Um, but then again, I would probably prefer the group where I voted for four of the books rather than the, the group for which I voted for one of the books. And then comes group H and I voted for one or none of the books. I voted for one. I voted for The Escape Artist. I'm pretty sure I voted for that. I, I suddenly don't remember. Um, and I have read Read Dangerously. However, I did not vote for that one because I did not like it that much. Um, it was about, uh, well, it's a book about books. And the problem was that when I had not read the book that was being spoken of, I did not find the essay interesting. So um, it was a bit of a problem because I had not read most of the books that were talked about in the book. So it was a bit, uh, a bit boring. Um, and then in that group, there's also another uh, World War II history because the escape artist is about uh, uh, a man who escaped Auschwitz and tried to warn the world of what he had seen. And uh, Blood in Ruins is also about World War II. So it's going to be interesting to see if both books can make it true, can make it through. Um, I don't think they will. <laughs> uh, perhaps The Escape Artist, but somehow Blood in Ruins, I don't know if it will make it through. But then again, last year there was a big book of history that made it all the way to the finals. So um, that's the last group. So my general thoughts are, there are again a lot of memoirs this year, but they are concentrated in two groups. Uh, there are five in group G, and three or four in group C, and then there's one in pretty much every other group, but they are rather concentrated. So, so if I'm lucky enough, I will not have one of these two groups um, and I'll get another one and then I'll be very happy. Um, as for predictions, as opposed to last year where there was a clear favorite, which was um, uh, Empire of Pain, which ended up in second place. So it was a clear favorite, but it ended up second. And the previous year, there was also a clear favorite, which was cast by Isabel Wilkerson and it won. Um, this year, I don't think there is a clear favorite. Uh, I'm not even going to vent. Do I predict a top six? Do I predict a top six? I cannot predict a top six because there's only, I've read so few of them. I've read how many? One, two and a half, three, I've read three and a half, four, no, four, four and a half. Yeah, I've read four and a half, so I cannot really predict a top six. Uh, even those on, on reputation, um, I'm not going to venture into a top six or not even a top three. Um, yeah, and that's it. I said I have no prediction. I have no prediction. This is Editing Elizabeth, and I've decided to venture on some predictions. I'm going to predict that in Group A, Song of the Cell, if it makes it past the first round, it's going to make it to the finals. In Group F, uh, An Immense World will make it to the final. It's going to be the first year that a nature book makes it to the final. However, I think neither of them will win. And I think the book that will win is one that I don't know of, uh, but it will be about a social issue because it always is. <laughs> so these are my predictions. So that, that, that's my thoughts on the Book Two Prize, the uh, 48 nonfiction. Um, I did check if I was selected uh, because um, in this video, Robert said that if you're not selected, it's not because the computer hates you. <laughs> I said that several times that the computer hates me because I keep not being selected. So I'm just going to say that the computer is heartless. Uh, it's not that he hates you, but it's just that it doesn't have a heart, which is absolutely accurate. So Robert cannot say that it's not true, uh, but the effect is pretty much the same. Somebody who is 
who hates you or somebody who is heartless with you, it's pretty much the same result, right? Uh, so uh, last year and the previous year, I volunteered for the first round both times and the computer did not select me. And this year I volunteered again and the computer did select me. So I'm very happy about that. And not only did he select me, but he gave me the group that I would have liked. He gave me group F where I have four books that I voted for in the group and there's just one teeny tiny memoir and it doesn't look bad. I went to look at it a little bit and it's short, it's 200 pages and it's not about growing up. It's It looks a bit literary, like it's about deconstructing and reconstructing yourself, something like that. Uh, so it sounds interesting. So uh, that's the other thing I want to say. I solemnly swear that I will not put the memoir at number six just because it's a memoir. I'm going to read all the books and I'm going to make sure that I vote for the ones that deserve to go in the next round, in my opinion, of course. It's still going to be slightly subjective. Well, slightly. It is going to be subjective. But I'm going to sort of put aside my preferences as to the topic, as to the form of the book. It's not because, in general, I don't like memoirs that I will put the memoir in the last place. Last year for the final, I did that because it was the final and it didn't matter um, what deserved to go to the next round because there was no next round. So I figured that for the final, I'm allowed to vote very selfishly. But in the first three rounds, I'm going to try to be objective, um, try to figure out what is well done, what is less well done. Uh, so is it well written? Uh, is it well researched? Is it engaging? Is it relevant? Um, and things like that. That's the way I'm going to vote. So I, I repeat, I will not vote for the memoir in sixth place just because it's a memoir. I may put it in sixth place because I find it insignificant compared to the rest, but I will not put it in sixth place just because it's a memoir. And uh, that's it. That's it. So let me know in the comments, are you judging for the book two prize? If yes, what group, what division? Uh, what do you think of the book two prize? Are there surprises in there? For me, there are no big surprises of books that I thought would be there and did not make it. I don't think there are big surprises of books that made it in that I thought would never make it in um, because it's nonfiction and I think all the books are good and everything can make it in or not. So I don't think there are big surprises on that aspect. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you think in the comments and thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. A prochain!